Former home to the greatest imperial power the world has ever known, Italy's past is colorful as it is tragic. From the Roman Empire to Mussolini's empire, we'll unravel the tale of Italy and discover its secrets. Join us as we learn about the people, the culture, and everything in between of the great country of Italy. The very first inhabitants of the Italian peninsula were called the Etruscans. Evidence of their existence in the area dates as far back as 800 BC. They were known for their grid patterned cities. By 600 BC, they ruled over much of what is now modern Italy, including present-day Rome. They were influenced by the Greeks due to their constant trade with them. In 510 BC, Roman citizens rebelled against the Etruscans, beginning a long campaign of expansionism which would end in the defeat of the Etruscans in 264 BC. The beginning of the Roman Republic was one of conquest. They established a new way of governing where two consuls ruled over the Senate. Rome had many enemies during this time, including the Carthaginians in North Africa, whom they also defeated after a lengthy campaign and two wars in 202 BC. After this, Rome looked north and conquered northern Italy by 90 BC. By the arrival of the first century BC, the power of the Roman Republic was put into question. The Senate was losing its grip and only powerful generals were able to amass enough influence to secure their own future. One such general was Julius Caesar, who was able to pacify Gaul in the name of Rome. He was assassinated in 44 BC, but his life and death brought about new changes in the way the dying Republic was to be ruled. Rome became an empire during the reign of Augustus Caesar, Julius Caesar's great-nephew, in 27 BC. The Senate was maintained, however the true power rested in the Emperor himself. The Roman Empire would become the greatest and longest-lasting empire in the history of the world, influencing modern architecture, laws, languages, and even day-to-day -day life. It expanded and expanded, taking over most of the Mediterranean regions and going as far as the island of Great Britain and the deserts and mountains of Asia Minor. However, this would not last, as the empire would eventually split into two in 324, after Emperor Constantine's death. This would be the final death throes of the Western Roman Empire, which would collapse in the 5th century. After the collapse of the Western Roman Empire, Italy was ruled by foreign kings who intermingled with the Italian population. Germanics, Ostrogoths, and so on, syncretized with Roman traditions. An attempt by the Eastern Roman Empire to reconquer the old empire was made in 535. They were able to take all of Italy again by 562. In 568, Lombard invaders made their way down to the peninsula but were stopped by the Byzantine armies. They intermarried with the Italian population soon after. After this, Italy would be ruled by non-Italian rulers throughout the centuries, including great powers such as the French, the Germans, and the Spanish. The Renaissance, which began in the 14th century, was a pivotal era for Italy, as it was during this time that art and the sciences flourished. Prominent figures such as Michelangelo, Leonardo da Vinci, Sandro Botticelli were alive during this time. In 1796, Napoleon launched a successful invasion of Italy and introduced a new republic called the Cisalpine Republic. In 1799, the Austrians and Russians were able to draw the French out of Italy. In 1848, revolutions broke out all over Europe. Many Italian city-states were pressured to grant or change constitutions. A war with Austria and France was looming, and the Italians looked to the Pope to unify the peninsula, but he declared neutrality. The French invaded and were able to take most of the peninsula, including Rome. Calls for unification were everywhere, and by 1870, the Italians were able to retake Rome. A dark age began in Italy, 
when Benito Mussolini founded the Fascists, a group dedicated to fighting the Communists and Socialists in Italy. He was able to wrest control of Italy from the King himself. Italy joined Nazi Germany during the outbreak of the Second World War, but was defeated, leading to the death of Mussolini and the hope of a free and democratic Italy alive again. According to the World Bank, Italy has a GDP of $2 trillion. Its progress from being one of the weakest economies after the Second World War to being one of the strongest in the EU is something to behold. Metallurgical and engineering industries are the backbone of the Italian economy. However, it lacks raw resources and energy sources. It imports four-fifths of its energy from abroad. The economy is a mixed one, where both private and public enterprises contribute to the economy of the country. However, there is a massive inequality of economic growth between the regions of Italy, particularly in southern Italy and this affects agricultural growth as well. The top agricultural products of Italy are milk, grapes, wheat, tomatoes, maize, apples, olives, oranges, potatoes and pork. The flag of Italy is a tri-coloured flag with horizontal stripes in the following order starting from the left. Green, white and red. It was first presented to the National Guard of the Transpadane Republic on October 9th, 1796. There is no clear-cut reason why these are the colours chosen, but they may have been based on the colours of the Milan militia during the Revolutionary Wars for Independence. The Cisalpine Republic then oriented it horizontally, and from then on this was considered the true flag of Italy. The colours are said to represent different things. Green represents the Italian landscape and human rights, red for the blood of those who fought during the wars of independence, and white for faith and the Alps. The capital of Italy is Rome, and the country has a total land area of 301,000 square kilometres or 116,000 square miles. It has two main mountain systems, the Alps, which also acts as a natural border, and the Apennines. Italy's largest islands are Sardinia and Sicily. The Alps act as a natural border between Italy, France, Switzerland, Austria and Slovenia, while the Apennines serve as the spine of the entire Italian peninsula and go as far as the Sicilian island. The highest point can be found in the Alps, Monte Bianco de Courmayeur, which stands at 4,700 metres or 15,400 feet above sea level. The climate in Italy is a Mediterranean one, with hot summers and mild winters. Much of the rainfall occurs during summer or spring. However, weather patterns vary from region to region. The average maximum temperature for the country is 21 degrees Celsius or 70 degrees Fahrenheit while the minimum average temperature is 17 degrees Celsius or 63 degrees Fahrenheit. The country has a total population of around 61 million. Italy's history makes it difficult to actually create an image of one unified ethnicity. As such, there is a large variation of cultures and traditions between different regions and cities. Dialects are varied as well. Standard Italian, however, is the official language of the country. Italy is a largely Catholic country, owing to its hosting of the Vatican City in Rome and its extensive past with Catholicism. There has been a massive influx of immigration in recent times to the region and after the fall of the Berlin Wall in 1989. Around 5 million inhabitants are considered to be foreign migrants who have decided to call Italy home. Italian cuisine is considered to be one of the best in the world, and it wouldn't be ideal to skip out on any dish from this wonderful country. So here's some of the dishes you can try out when you make your way to Italy on your next vacation. Originating from Roman times, gnocchi di patate which translates to a knot in wood, 
is one mainstay of Italian cuisine. It's a type of dumpling made with wheat flour, potato and eggs, and then cooked in salted boiling water. They are usually eaten as the first course as an alternative to soups. Lasagna alla Bolognese, a recipe from the Emilia-Romagna region, might be one of the world's most copied recipes. With varying recipes throughout the region and throughout the world, one can easily make their own version from scratch. The dish is made in very flat, wide sheets, stacked layers with fillings of ragu, bechamel sauce and even veggies. Arguably one of the most famous Italian dishes on this list, pizza margarita is a staple of any breakfast, lunch or dinner. It's a type of pizza originating from Naples, roundish in shape with a raised edge and garnished with hand-crushed peeled tomatoes, mozzarella, fresh basil leaves and extra virgin olive oil. A dish made from cold slices of veal topped with tuna sauce, vitello tonnato may come out as unappetizing at first, but don't be fooled, it packs a lot of flavors. It is usually eaten during the summertime as the main course. Not only is it popular in Italy, it's also popular amongst South American countries such as Argentina, Uruguay and Paraguay. And of course, tiramisu, one of the more famous desserts originating from Italy. It's made of ladyfinger pastries dipped in coffee, layered with eggs, sugar, mascarpone and flavored with cocoa. The name comes from the Italian phrase tiramisu, which means pick-me-up, a rightful name for a quick pick-me-up dessert. A multitude of prominent figures from the Italian peninsula have made their way into the annals of history, by conquest or by wits. By creativity or by charm, they have proven themselves popular not just amongst the locals, but also abroad. Here are a few popular people from Italy. The first Roman Emperor, Augustus Caesar, although arguably not Italian in the modern sense, was still born in the peninsula. He paved the way for the centuries-old empire that we know of today. Leonardo da Vinci, one of the greatest inventors of all time, was born and raised in Florence, particularly in Anchiano. He is credited with inventing flying machines, the earliest model of a tank, and most famous of all, painting the Mona Lisa. Michelangelo, another Florence native, was one of the leading figures of the Renaissance. He's most famous for painting the Sistine Chapel ceiling and designing the Laurentian Library, which pioneered Mannerist architecture. Among the more infamous Italians, Benito Mussolini was the founder of the fascist movement, a reactionary movement against the rise of communism and socialism in Italy. He joined forces with Adolf Hitler during the Second World War, but was eventually defeated by the Allied forces. One of the most famous Italian designers, Giorgio Armani, was born in Piacenza. He formed his own company, Armani, in 1975 which has substantially grown branching into music, sports, and even luxury hotels. If you enjoyed this video on Italy, you'll love this next one.